Hello and welcome to this video in which we introduce the discrete time Fourier transform. In this video we'll show you the equations, which I've actually uh, drawn here, of the discrete time Fourier transform and its inverse, and then we'll do a few simple examples that will show how these equations can be used. So the idea is the discrete time Fourier transform takes a time sequence, x of n, it's an infinite time sequence and not periodic, and transforms it into a function of frequency. Now, in this particular um, notation, we show that the Fourier transform is a function of e to the j omega. This is to show that the uh, Fourier transform of this discrete time series is periodic. Other, um, I, I, I've seen uh, authors of textbooks do it both ways either write it as e to the j omega or just uh, omega with the idea that in any case you need to remember that this is going to be a periodic function of omega. So this, if I'm given a time series, this is the formula that I can use to compute the Fourier transform. If I'm given the Fourier transform, this is the formula that I can use to compute the time series. And we'll show examples of computing it in both directions and um, Hopefully you'll find that interesting and useful. So let's start with the following example. Let's suppose that x of n is delta of n minus 1, that basically corresponds to this guy, plus delta of n plus 1, that corresponds to this guy. And all the other terms in x of n are 0. So for every other value of n besides negative 1 and 1, x of n is 0. So um, I can compute the Fourier transform using this summation, Hi, using this summation here. And uh, basically all the terms except for n is equal to negative 1 and 1 are 0. So when I go back to here, I'll have a term for n is equal to negative 1. So then we'll have x of n is 1 times e to the minus j negative 1 omega. And then I'll have a term 1 times e to the minus j 1 omega. And again, all the other terms are 0. And so I can write this as e to the j omega plus e to the minus j omega. And I immediately look at this, or I look at this and immediately recognize this uh, as a form of Euler's relationship, which I can write this then as 2 cosine omega. Okay, so the Fourier transform of this sequence that has these two non-zero terms is 2 cosine omega. And I've plotted that, and it looks like this. So this is x of e to the j omega. And it goes from, I plotted it from negative pi to pi up here, and I've plotted it from 0 to 2 pi up here. And the reason for doing that is to show you that it is periodic. Well, you probably realize that the cosine is periodic. And uh, you'll see it done both ways in practice. Sometimes you'll see this, uh, this Fourier transform uh, written out or, or plotted from minus pi to pi. Sometimes you'll see it plotted from 0 to 2 pi. And so you should be used to seeing it with both. Okay, so let's see how to take the inverse Fourier transform. Again, we have x of e to the j omega. Whoops, my drawing program is just spassed out. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is 2 cosine omega. And we have then x of n is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral over a, a, a interval of uh, length 2 pi, and since this is periodic, it doesn't matter which interval, of the 2 cosine omega e to the j n omega 
d omega. So the way to work this, probably the easiest way to work this, is to recognize the fact that this e to the j n omega can be written as cosine n omega plus j sine n omega, which means that my x of n is going to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral over uh, a length of 2 pi, of 2 times cosine omega cosine n omega, plus 2j cosine omega sine n omega. And these are both integrals with respect to omega. And now I can write this product of the cosines as, um, if you look up uh, the trig identity for the product of cosines, you'll have one half cosine of the sum of these two arguments. So if I have omega plus n omega, I can write that as n plus 1 omega plus 1 half times the cosine of the difference of the two arguments. So um, n omega minus omega will be n minus 1 omega. And similarly, if I have a cosine omega times a sine n omega, I can write this as um, this term as one half sine n plus one omega minus one half sine n minus one omega. And so I'm going to end up uh, integrating these guys over a period or an interval of length 2 pi. Well, if n is anything but negative 1 here, I'll be taking cosine of n plus 1, so if n were, say, uh, 3, then I'd be cosine of 4 omega, and I'd be going over an integral, or an interval of 2 pi. And uh, the cosine of any integer times omega, its average value, which is what I'd be computing with this integral, over an interval of 2 pi is 0. Now the one case where that's not going to be the answer here is when n is equal to negative 1, then I have cosine of 0. And cosine of 0 is 1, and so I would be integrating uh, 1 over an interval of 2 pi. Similarly here, when n is equal to 1, I'll have cosine of 0, which is 1. Otherwise, I'm going to have the integral of an integral number of periods of a cosine. Um, and similarly for the sines, uh, when n is not equal to negative 1, uh, I'll have an integral number of periods, and so the integral will be 0. When n is equal to negative 1, I have sine of 0, which is 0, so that integrates to 0, too. So the only times that I'm going to get anything that's non-zero in this integral is when n is negative 1 and when n is 1. And so when n is negative 1, I'll have 1 over 2 pi times 2 times 1 half, that 2, that 1 half, that's 1 over 2 pi, times 2 pi, because I'm integrating cosine of 0, which is 1, over uh, the uh, interval 2 pi. And this turns out to just be 1. Okay, So this will be the case when n is equal to negative 1. It also it turns out that it looks exactly the same when n is equal to 1. And this integral is going to be 0 for any other value of n, which basically then I look at my original x of n, that's what I had. So uh, what we've done here is we've taken a Fourier transform, then we've taken the inverse Fourier transform and gotten what we started, which is good, because if you haven't done that, or if you don't get that, then you've done something wrong. OK. Um, just to illustrate one more uh, simple case, 
Here I have x of n is delta of n minus delta of n minus 1. And so if I work this out in my summation, the only terms in this summation that will not be 0 is the term when x is, or when n is equal to 0. So x of 0 is 1. e to the minus j 0 omega will be 1. And when n is equal to 1, then x will be negative 1, and I'll have e to the minus j omega. So if I write down then what that gives me, I have x of e to the j omega is equal to 1. That's what I get from this term because n is 0. Minus, this is a minus 1, e to the minus j omega. Okay, because n is 1, I got e to the minus j 1 times omega. Okay, so now I can do a little bit of manipulation. And I'll do the manipulation first and then explain why I did it. Uh, I can write this as e to the minus j omega over 2 times e to the j omega over 2. So this term and this term multiply together to create 1 minus e to the minus j omega over 2. Uh, this term and this term multiplied together give us this. Now we immediately recognize this as um, 1 over 2j. I'm, I'm sorry. If we multiply it by 1 over 2j, 1 over 2j times this gives us sine of omega over 2. So to keep that there, we in, or to give us this uh, 1 over 2j, we'll multiply by 2j. And we'll still have this e to the minus j omega over 2. Uh, so we have this guy, this guy, and then these guys, which um, when we sort it all out, hopefully you can sort it all out, uh, we'll have um, j e to the minus j omega over 2, 2 sine omega over 2. And I've drawn it this way, or written it this way specifically, because this represents the magnitude of the uh, Fourier transform, and this represents the phase. So I can graph this. Uh, this is the real part, and the imaginary part is a function of omega. And I'm graphing this from 0 to 2 pi. Or, if you want to see a graph in terms of magnitude and phase, it looks like this, 0 to 2 pi. And you can see here that the magnitude goes from 0 up to 2 and back down to 0. So this is the 2 uh, sine omega over 2, and this is the phase. OK, so that pretty much wraps up this video. Again, the purpose is to introduce you to the discrete time Fourier transform and show you how to do the computation of the discrete time Fourier transform and its inverse for a couple of simple situations. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.